Hey everybody, it's Ashley again from the Avenue Tennis and we are back for week two of our 30 minute follow along tennis sessions. And in this week, we're gonna be working on our fearsome forehands. Now, just like last week, you can do all of these exercises in any space, whether it's outdoors, in a garden, or indoors at home, and you can use household items if you don't have a tennis racket or a tennis ball. So before we get into it, I'm gonna show you through some of the items that you're going to need. Don't worry though, I'm gonna give you a whole minute to hunt around the house to try and find some of these things. So the first thing you're going to need is a tennis racket or something that is flat and that you can hold comfortably in your hand. So I've got this, okay, this would be perfect. It's flat, you can hold it in your hand, you can hit a tennis ball with it. So something like this, it could be a hard back book, anything that you can find that you could comfortably hold and gently hit a tennis ball or something similar with it will be perfect. The second thing you're going to need is a ball, okay? I've got a tennis ball here. If you don't have access to a ball at home, then you can roll a pair of socks into a ball. You see that I did that last week. This can work really well. If you can find something that bounces, that will be better. However, this will equally be as fun. So a ball of socks or a ball, as well as your racket or substitute racket. A different thing from last week that we're going to use is a hat. Okay, so I've just got a normal baseball cap here. Any hat is good. Um, see if you can bring your hat along. If you don't have a hat, then you can use your hand instead. And finally, you're going to need three items to use as markers. So last week I had a pair of trainers. This week I've got a chocolate lid. I don't know where I keep finding these. I've got a Frisbee and I'm gonna use my drinks bottle as my third item to be a marker. Um, it'll be handy if you have a drinks bottle as well because you might get a bit sweaty in this session so it'll be good to have a drink when you need it. So there are your items. I'm gonna give you one minute to see if you can go and find them. So a quick reminder, something to use as a racket, something flat, something hard that you can hit a ball with. Something to use as a tennis ball. It could be a ball of any kind or a ball of socks. A hat, so if you've got a cap around the house, if not, don't worry, you can use your hand for that one. And three items to use as markers. They could be things like I use, they could be jumpers, anything to put on the floor to mark a space in your room. Three, two, one, go. seconds left. Now don't worry if you haven't found everything. You can use your imagination. I'm sure you'll be able to use your hands. Five, four, three, two, one and stop there. Now just like last week, don't forget to ask your grown-ups if you're allowed to use the equipment that you've chosen and make sure that you're setting it all up in a safe space. So we don't want to be too close to any windows or any televisions or any lights above us. Try to find a safe space. Okay, so the first items that you're gonna use, if you put all of your items into a little pile somewhere just out of the way, the first items that we're going to need for our warm-up part of the session are our three markers. Okay, so pick up your three markers and what you're going to do is you're going to create a space. One of your markers is going to go in front of your space. Okay, so make sure you can see your screen in front of you and you're going to have one marker just in front of your feet, about one step in front of you. You're going to use your other two markers to put them a couple of steps out to the side. So I've got one out to this side and one out to this side. So these are my three markers and you'll see that they've made a little triangle. Okay, so once you've got your space, hopefully you're able to see the screen and see your first marker in front of you and your other two to the side of your body. 
Now, just like last week, we're going to start off with a physical warm-up. Now, physical warm-up in every sport is really, really important to get all of your body and all of your muscles working, but as well as that, we're going to get our brain working too so that we can have a really good, fun session. So, warm-up number one. A little bit like last week, we played remote control last week. We're going to make sure that we're on our toes all of the time. So your first position that you're gonna stand in is your ready position. So you can see me here, my feet are nice and wide apart. I've got my knees bent and I'm nice and low. I look like I'm ready to pounce. Now this is your ready position. I want you to number your three items, one, two, and three. The one in front of you is number one, number two, and number three. Now, as soon as I shout a number, you're going to see if you can run, touch that item and get back to your ready position here. Let's have a little practice. One, ready position. Two, ready position. Two, ready position and rest. Okay, so that was a little practice run. So you can see here that doesn't matter which item I was touching, I was always facing forwards. We learned that last week, didn't we? when you're playing tennis, it's really important that you're always facing towards your opponent. Okay, we're gonna up the speed now. Ready positions first. Three, tap, ready position. Three, ready position. One, ready position. One, two, two, and rest. Okay, good. So hopefully you're starting to feel a bit warm. I'm certainly starting to feel a bit out of breath. But you'll remember from last week that you guys are much fitter than I am. So this is where we start to test your brain and your memory. So I'm going to shout out more than one number. Now, if I shout one, two, go, your job is to touch number one, ready position, number two, ready position. If I shout three, two, go, you're going to go to number three, ready position, number two, and ready position. So you only go once I shout go. Are you ready? Let's try one, three, go. One, ready position, three, ready position. Well done, did you do it faster than me? Let's try again, here we go. Two, three, go. Two, ready position, three, Ready position, awesome speed. Right, you guys are far too good at this. Let's test your memory even further. I'm gonna shout three numbers. You gotta see if you can remember all three numbers and in the right order. So we'll do a test run first. We're going to try three, one, two. Ready, go. Three, ready position. One, ready position. Two, ready position. Well done, really, really good. Should we try four? Let's give it a go. Let's try one, three, one, two. Go! One, ready position. Three, ready position. One, ready position. Two, ready position. Amazing. Right, final round then. We're gonna try five. And I'm not going to join in this time. So this is gonna be a real test to see if you can do all five of the correct numbers in the right order without my help. Are we ready? We're going to try three, two, one, two, three, go. Make sure you're doing your ready positions after each one, good stuff. Always facing forward, so lots of side steps and shuffling. Well done. So if you remembered three, two, one, two, three, you smashed it. Awesome job, grab yourselves a quick drink. Perfect, and don't forget, if you're using your drink as one of your markers, make sure you put it back in the same spot. Okay, so we're now ready to introduce our ball. Okay, so remember, if you've got a ball, pick that up now. If you don't have a ball and you're using socks, pick that up instead. And we're gonna head back to our little marked out zone. So, things we learnt in that warm-up. We learnt the ready position, okay, that's something new. We learnt the ready position. In the ready position, we have our feet apart and our knees bent. We're ready to pounce. This 
position is so important in tennis and you'll see professional tennis players do this after every single shot so that they're ready for the ball. The second thing we learned, which we actually learned last week as well, is make sure when you play tennis, you're always facing forwards. If you turn your back to the court or your opponent, then the ball's gonna whiz past you and you're gonna miss it. So it's really, really important that everywhere you move, if you're moving sideways, you're facing this direction. If you're moving backwards, you need to still face this direction. Wherever you go, always facing towards your screen. Okay, so this exercise we're going to do a little practice and then we're going to have a competition to see how many you can score in one minute so the practice round your job is to see if you can stand behind marker number three you're going to throw your ball up catch it and then do your ready position then you're going to go to number two up catch ready position then you're going to go to number one choose each side of your marker up catch ready position and we're going to do the same again so we're going to go three up catch side step two up catch side step one up catch and back to your ready position each time so have a little practice at that one first remember socks are fine if you've got a ball you can do it with a ball as well so get practicing so three catch ready two catch ready one Excellent, one more round to practice. Okay, so we are now ready for the competition. So I'm gonna set my stopwatch to one minute and your job is to count how many catches you can make in that time. Now, if you go and you drop the ball, doesn't matter. You just don't score a point for that one. You go back to the middle and you carry on. And then when you get another one, you add that to your score. So this would be one point, two points. Oh, I dropped it, so I'm still on two points. Three points, four points, you get the drift. Okay, so your one minute challenge starts now, off we go. See if you can count your score out loud. Great work. Remember that ready position after every single shot or every single catch. Amazing. 20 seconds gone. Keep it up. Don't worry if you drop it. You can add your score on on the next one. Good. Make sure you're always facing forwards, doing that ready position every single time. Good job. 20 seconds to go. Really look at that tennis ball. Make sure your eyes are watching the ball all of the time. That way you're going to get even more points. Great stuff. Last couple then, see if we can get one more point. Stop there. Wow. Now, if you manage to score anything around five points, if you manage to get five catches, excellent work. If you got more than that, shout it at the screen now. How many did you get? Wow, incredible. I wish I was as good as you at your age. Now, that was our body and ball warm up. So now that we've practiced our movement in our proper warm up, we've now introduced a ball which like last week means that our hand-eye coordination is getting better and getting us ready to use the racket, which we're going to move on to now. Remember from last week as well, your racket or your item, is it a book, something flat that you can hit a ball with, we're going to use for sandwich catches. Now, last week we practiced sandwich catches. It was the game where we had to use our racket and our hand as slices of bread and we used our ball as the filling and we had to see if we can make a sandwich like so. If you had a sock instead of a ball, then you were to throw your socks up and make your sandwich because socks aren't very good at bouncing. Okay, so we're gonna reintroduce the sandwich catches, but with our new footwork and our new ready position. So starting in the middle, just like we did before, we're going to go three, 
two, and one, but every time we get to our marker, we've got to throw and make a sandwich. Let's have a practice. So we're gonna go behind marker number three. Ready position behind marker number two. Ready position up to marker number one. Remember when you get to marker number one, you want your shoes each side of the marker. Back to your ready position, here we go. Good. Yes. Excellent. Keep practicing. We'll do another 10 seconds of practice. Facing forwards all of the time. Lots of side steps. Ready position after each go. Awesome stuff. Okay. Let's make it into a challenge again. So we're going to go for 30 seconds this time. So we've got a lot less time. We've only got half of the amount of time. So your score will be a lot lower than before because not only do we have less time, it's actually going to be a lot more challenging for you. But like I said last week, we like a challenge. So let's see if you can get three catches. Okay, we're going to set the timer for 30 seconds. Three, two, one, go. Good job, we're halfway. Don't forget your ready positions. Really watching your ball or watching your socks so that we don't drop them. And stop there. Amazing work. Give yourselves a big pat on the back. So hand-eye coordination, we've taken it to the next level. We're now using our racket or our item. So have yourselves a very quick drinks break. We're gonna have about 20 seconds to have a swig of water and to catch our breath. So while you're having your drink, I'm going to quickly talk you through the forehand. Now, if you listen back at the start, today's session is all about fearsome forehands. Now, the forehand is the shot that you hit using your favorite hand with an underarm swing. So if this is my favorite hand, I'll be holding the racket like this and my underarm swing would start down low and it would finish up high. So you can see that I'm hitting upwards, which would allow me to hit the tennis ball over the tennis net and that's what we want isn't it so our forehand is where we swing from low to high when we finish our swing we want to see if we can get our elbow to be right out in front of our nose i like to call it the big nose finish so when you hit your forehand we're looking for this pointy elbow at the end now in tennis we are allowed one bounce so the ball would bounce on the floor and then we would hit it over the net in wheelchair tennis, you're allowed two bounces. So if you're in a chair, the ball could bounce twice before you hit it. You can use one bounce, but you're allowed to use two bounces. So for our next task, we are going to use our ball or our ball of socks, if we don't have a ball, and we're going to pick up our baseball cap to practice our full forehand swings, because what we don't want is to use our tennis racket and to smash the windows and to smash the TVs. Using our hat will be a lot, lot safer. So pick up your hat and your ball and head back over to your zone. So for this one, we're gonna start off trying to practice our forehand without movement, and then we're going to introduce movement afterwards. So if you have a tennis ball, you're going to drop it on the floor in front of you, and your job is to see if you can catch your ball in your hat and finish over your shoulder like this, okay? We want to see if we can get our elbow to finish pointing towards the screen. So we're gonna try again. We're gonna drop the ball, swing, and catch with our elbow up. If you have a ball, you can get started and get practicing that now. If you don't have a ball and you're using socks, do the same thing, but we know that the socks aren't gonna bounce very high. So we're gonna see if we can catch it before it touches the floor, like so. And again, drop, catch, like so. So let's keep practicing. Drop and catch, making sure that we're getting our elbow pointing to the screen at the end of the swing. Oh, I dropped that one. Don't worry if you do drop it, you're gonna run pick it up, see if you can go again. Now you'll notice that my body is facing towards my marker at the side. So instead of facing forwards, I'm going to be facing sideways now towards my favorite side. If this is your favorite side, you're going to face this way. If this is your favorite side, you're going to face this way. So let's carry on practicing. Drop and catch, finishing right over your shoulder. Drop and catch. We'll do a few more. I'll do some on the other side to show you this side too. Drop and catch. 
I've got to pick that one up. Good, so just like me, you might drop a few, that doesn't matter. It's all about practicing. Drop and catch. It's not easy, is it? Okay, so we're gonna make it into a challenge now. We are going to do 30 seconds to see how many catches we can do. But it's not gonna be easy because I want you to use both hands. So this is what it's gonna look like. You're going to drop towards number three. Then you're gonna turn your body, change hands, drop towards number two. Switch hands again. Hold your hat in your favorite hand. Drop and catch and to the other side drop and catch now i want you to see if you can get three catches in 30 seconds are you ready your time starts now off we go drop catch turn your body to the other side switch hands drop catch keep going i've got one point so far see if you can beat my score good going everybody seven seconds to go see if we can get one more point drop and catch stop well done that was a lot trickier than i thought it would be i managed to get two points i dropped quite a few there did you manage to beat my score shout your score out now amazing really really good so that was your forehand because we were using one hand mostly on our favorite side, but I decided to make it tricky for you to see if you can use your weaker hand as well, which is gonna help you in all of the sports that you play because it's good to be able to use both sides of your body. Right, grab yourselves one more quick drinks break and then we're gonna play our game. Excellent, you're all working really, really hard and you're learning some new skills today that we didn't know last week, so that is superb. We're gonna learn even more next week, but before that, we are now going to play our game. Now, last week's game was tennis golf. We had to see how many shots it took us to hit our target. This week, we are going to play goals. Okay, so you can see here that I've set up two goal posts using two of my markers. Now, you can choose how far apart your goals are. If you've got a tiny goal, it's gonna be really, really difficult. If you've got a really big goal, it's gonna be super easy. So try to set yourself a challenge. Set your goal posts at a distance that's gonna make it a bit tricky for you, okay? So you can see my two goal posts here. Now, my job is using my tennis racket or substitute tennis racket, I've got to see if I can roll my ball or my sock ball through the goalposts. So you'll see here, using my favorite hand because we're practicing four hands, I'm going to roll the ball between the goalposts. If you score a goal, you score a point. Now, as soon as you've hit your ball, your job is to chase after it and you're going to splat it using your lid or your racket so it's going to look like this so we're going to roll the ball we're going to run and we're going to splat and then that's one point because we scored the goal we're going to try another one roll run splat so you've got to be super super speedy now if you hit the ball really far or really hard it's going to be really tough for you to chase after it and you're going to be miles away from your target so you're not going to be able to score points very easily so i suggest on this one playing with control so let's watch another little practice one we're going to roll run that was a nice controlled one now i've got an easy goal on this one two run splat three run and splat we're going to see how many goals you can score in 30 seconds Remember, use your favorite hand. If the ball goes onto your non-favorite side, you're gonna to have to move your feet so that you can splat it on your favorite side. Okay, are you ready for the challenge? If you haven't set up your goals, set those up now. Get yourself ready with your racket and ball. By the way, if you're using socks, it's gonna be so tricky because they're not gonna roll very far on this one, but give it a go, we love a challenge. Okay. How many can you do? Your time starts now. One, splat, two. Good, keep going. You might be able to hear the seagulls. There must be some fish and chips around. Good. Keep 
it up. We're halfway. Let's see if you can get two or three more goals. Don't forget to splat and then turn to face the goals. Five seconds to go. And stop there. Well done, everybody. Give yourselves a little clap using your racket and ball. Amazing work. Tell me, what score did you get? Fantastic. Really, really good. That's not easy. And if you found it easy, maybe your goalposts were too far apart. So next time you try it, see if you can make them super, super small. If it was too tricky and you only got one or two points, maybe you set the challenge too hard. So next time, make it a little bit bigger. And what I suggest you try and do is if you've got anybody else in the house, it might be a brother or a sister or one of your grown-ups, it might be mum or dad, see if you can get them to challenge your score, okay? And hopefully you'll beat theirs. Okay, so that is the end of our physical session. So you all did amazingly well. So today we learned all about the forehand. And what I want you to do just before we switch off, I want you to have a little thing. So you're gonna use your brain for this bit. One thing that you learned during this session. Okay, so have a think. One thing that you learned. Now, if you can think of that thing easily, try to think of two things or maybe even three things. I'm gonna give you 20 seconds to have a think about it. Okay, so have a think. One or two things that you learned today. And after these 20 seconds, I'm gonna tell you some of the things and I want you to put your thumb up in the air if you were thinking of the same thing that I was thinking of. Okay, so the first thing that we learned today was our ready position. Now, our ready position is where our feet are apart and our knees are bent so we're nice and low, ready to pounce. So well done if you were thinking of your ready position. We also learned that in tennis, we always have to move facing forwards. Wherever we go, we always need to be facing forwards. We actually learned that thing last week. We learned the name of a shot. We learned about forehands. Forehands are the shots that we use our favorite hand on. Did you get that? Was that what you were thinking of? Forehands. How many bounces are we allowed as tennis players? That's right, we're allowed one bounce or, that's right, two bounces if you are a wheelchair tennis player. Excellent. Finally, where does our racket finish when we do our forehand swing? It finishes right over our shoulder because we're doing a low to high swing. So actually, in that short space of time, we learned a lot about forehands and about tennis. So amazing work again. Next week, we're going to be practicing our backhands, okay, which is similar to the forehand, but with two hands. And I'm gonna try and come up with some really fun games and some really challenging games so that you can get better and even better, you can challenge your family members too. Well done, everybody. I hope to see you back in our next lesson for session three. I look forward to seeing you there. Take care.